18th Sunday at the Pentecost. Please join us and stand for our procession and our processional hymn number 390. Praise to the Lord. Second Book of Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends words to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, 
He sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a message to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farapar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters in Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth, except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm today is number 111. You'll find it printed in your bulletin. You'll read it responsibly by whole verses, and you're invited to join and read the bolded verses. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation, Great are the peace of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives good to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He shows his people the power of his works. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. He set redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the gain of his those who act accordingly have the letters of the His praise endures forever. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, he will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this, and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go, and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, Lord Christ. centuries. But if you stop and think about it, quite a good deal of history has gone into producing it. Lemons were introduced to Europe in Muslim Spain. Apples to make cider were introduced to this continent from Europe as early as 1625. Meanwhile, allspice berries are native to the islands of the Caribbean, as is rum. Cloves are from Indonesia, and cinnamon is from the subcontinent of Asia. All this goes to say, international travel and commerce has always made the foreign near, familiar. Americans, I think, especially relish in this sort of thing. Mold, hot cider is like us. It's a mutt. For most of us here, there's no such thing as a culture or a people existing in a vacuum. Exploration, trade, misfortune, oppression, hopes, and even enslavement have all brought us here. And our task for the past several centuries have been to figure out how to make sense of it all. And more often than not, we do it poorly. But at our best, we still all hold on to some sentimental attachment toward this new world and its promise for us to be the pilots of our own destiny. The ancient world of Jesus' time, though, held on to no such sentimental attachments. That of which is foreign is dangerous oppressive or perverted. And it is the problem of the foreign that our readings today are intimately concerned with. Do you recognize our reading from the second book of Kings today? Jesus curiously makes reference to it earlier from our reading today in Luke's Gospel. In chapter 4, Jesus returns from being tempted of Satan in the wilderness to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and preaches in the synagogue 
of his hometown of Nazareth. He stands up in the assembly and reads from the prophet Isaiah, and all seems to be going well. Jesus tells his friends and neighbors that he has come to fulfill God's word. He has come to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year of jubilee of the Lord. This is good news indeed. Jesus, local boy done good, is in fact God's agent. And ought they then to be proud? The admiration of the crowd, though, is proven fickle when Jesus then says, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. And then he says, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. Immediately, Luke says, when the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town, and led him out of the town. They led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. Why this rage? What did Jesus say? The story of Naaman the Syrian is one of the curious narratives of the Bible. The prophet Elisha, the pupil of the great Elijah, is summoned to heal an Aramean, a non-Jew, a foreigner, someone outside of the covenant which God has made with his people. And he is healed by washing in the Jordan from his leprosy. Further, he recognizes the one true God. In that story, a foreigner, an outsider, is healed and comes to the truth. In his own way, Naaman shames those already living under the covenant, but who do not heed the Lord. But more than that, Naaman shows us an image of God's vision for the world, as revealed in Israel's prophets, that all people will recognize the Lord God and worship only Him. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus isn't led to the crest of the hill for proclaiming Himself as the Messiah and that God has done something in Him. But He is almost killed by His friends his neighbors, and perhaps even his family for bringing home to them that God's purposes extend outside themselves and that the Lord is about something that will radically subvert how they see the world. Jumping ahead in Luke's Gospel, today we have more lepers and another horn though this time it is a Samaritan, not an Aramean. Remember, Samaritans, though, are an even more unique figure in the rogues gallery of outsiders of Jesus' time. Samaritans are the descendants of those Jews who were left behind in the Promised Land, while the majority of their brethren went into exile in Babylon. When their former co-religionists returned home after 70 years, they found a people assimilated and intermarried with the varying tribes of Canaan, and now seemingly unrecognizable. Samaritans, it was believed, were syncretists. They combined the religion of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob with that of the surrounding Canaanite people whom they had intermarried with. Further, Samaritans believed that it was on Mount Gerizim, not Mount Zion, where God was to be worshipped. Even in John's Gospel, Jesus is found saying to the Samaritan woman that she worships what she does not know. A Samaritan then 
isn't just an ethnic foreigner, but someone who actively corrupts the revelation of God and the relationship he has with his people. Remember that that is the context then for the leper who returns to thank God today in our gospel passage. Not only does his ethnicity and his idea of God ostracize him from Jewish society, but he's also afflicted with one of the varying skin diseases labeled leprosy. He is ritually impure himself, but more dangerously, he is a physical and spiritual contagion to others and must eke out an existence on the very fringe. He is the platonic image of being marginalized. No one then could be more unexpected to be a revelation from God. The ten lepers acknowledge Jesus and call on him to heal them. Heal them rather. They all listen to his words, and curiously, even the Samaritan goes to the Jewish priest and is cleansed. But our Samaritan goes further. The Samaritan worships at Jesus' feet and praises God. The Samaritan has been made well by recognizing Jesus for who he is. The questions surrounding the Samaritan's family of origin, his God, or his disease, have dissipated. And what remains is a man who called for mercy and whom Jesus healed. The Samaritan leper, like Naaman before him, not only is a story of God's power in mercy, but it also shows us how God's salvation, revealed in Jesus Christ, eliminates the distinction between neighbor and foreign, from those who are far off and from those who are near. Jesus is the agent by which our seemingly endless meandering in the mire about who we are and who belongs ends. Our identities are determined in him. Further though, Jesus' lifting up of the leprous Samaritan, the most unexpected of heroes, <coughs> points to the fact that in him, in Jesus, God acts as unexpectedly and from just as foreign <coughs> of a place. God doesn't send his son in with the tanks of the heavenly host nor with the legislative agenda, nor with the latest fad for attaining mindfulness or enlightenment. But God does send himself as a person to live with us and to save us, but not in the way we anticipate. We are saved by that which, by all accounts, should be chalked up as a failure. We are saved by the cross. For if the healing of the leprous Samaritan teaches us a lesson about grace present at the margins of our expectations, the cross shows us that God can even use blasphemy, can even use deicide, in order to win us back to him. God then is most present in the margins. But do we have the courage to go and find him? Who in our hearts have we made into the leprous Samaritan? Who is untouchable? Who seemingly can't be redeemed. Do they look or think differently than we do? 
Do they make less money than we do? Do they make more? Are they a threat to our democracy? Are they hateful? Whatever image of propriety we have erected in our hearts and which we hold on to so tightly, it will most likely be driving Jesus out of town and to the top of a hill. As Bishop Frank Weston once put it, it is folly. It is madness to suppose that you can worship Jesus in the sacraments and Jesus on his throne of glory when you are sweating him in the souls and bodies of his children. It cannot be done. There then, as I conceive it, is your present duty. Go out and look for Jesus in the ragged, in the naked, in the oppressed and sweated, in those who have lost hope, in those who are struggling to make good. Look for Jesus. And when you see him, gird yourselves with his towel and try to wash their feet. Heed the good bishop then. Find the Christ, even though he will not be in the first place you would wish to go. Amen. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. That all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael and our Bishop Daniel. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Montgomery Deanery, the Middle East Study Group, and the Episcopal Church of Mary, Mother of God, Diocese of Guatemala. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our President Joseph and his cabinet and staff, for Congress, for Tom, our governor, and for all of our elected officials. We pray for the people of Ukraine as they continue to suffer through war and loss of life, and for all those in Florida facing destruction from Hurricane Ian. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide us all, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless 
Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Joy Burnett, and for those expecting the birth of a child, especially Summer and Brian. We pray for those serving in the military, firefighters, the police force, healthcare workers, especially Chris, Josh, Matthew, Keith, Jack, Joe, Jason, Ryan, George, Jared, Andrew, Ronan, and Gage. Lord, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer from body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those entrusted to your prayers. Kenya, Sharon, Michelle, Daryl, Judy, Emma and those you name either silently or aloud. Lord, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for those you name either silently or aloud. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what pours with your will, and those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. All right. Yes. 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 awesome fill-in, so I appreciate it. So good morning, everybody. Um, just wanted to remind you all that tonight is the um, basket preview, so you can come and purchase tickets to put in for the basket raffles if you're not able to make the um, bingo, or even if you just want to come and take a peek and kind of get your tickets in a little bit sooner. So we wound up with, um, I believe, 17 baskets, so I thank everybody for all the donations of these beautiful baskets that are in the back. So take a look, you know, stop by, take a look at coffee hour. The, um, the doors will open tonight at 6.30, about 6.30 to about 8.30. Ticket prices are um, six tickets for $5, 12 tickets for $10, and 25 tickets for $20. Bingo then will be next Friday. Doors open at 6, 6.15. 10 rounds of um, bingo, tickets are $30. We still have some, uh, some tickets left, so they are moving quickly. So if you're interested, come see me afterwards, um, the coffee hour for your tickets. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that our next Jazz and Joe is going to be um, no Thursday, November 3rd. So mark it on your calendar. All right, thank you. I just 
just wanted to say our community service project of the Siemens Institute is still going on. Uh, the first Sunday in November is the last Sunday. Thank you for all your donations so far. We've already filled up one big box. So if you would like to drop anything off, there's a list uh, of the things that are needed. So thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, my impassioned plea last week to sell more reeds really worked. So we have the minimum order of 25, and I have uh, two people have generously offered to buy wreaths for the North X doors. So that's wonderful. If you want to buy more wreaths, if no anybody uh, wants to, still hasn't put in their order, here's the deal: we have to order them in groups of five. So if you want to order one, you got to get four friends to go along. <laughs> so. Um, but we do have the minimum order and we have the uh, two for the North X door. So that's wonderful. So next week will be the last call. And um, I don't think I'll be here, so I'll have to ha I have uh, Mrs. Gribben fill in for me. So, um, but thank you to those who have uh, ordered them. You just need to pay me now if you have some. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. The only thing I have is my usual spiel. Um, in case of pastoral emergency or otherwise, uh, please don't miss it. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine? Where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Thank you. sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
yourself. And when we fall into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask of your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
Grace took up the same place. The body put in the place. The body of Christ took up our sin. The body of Christ had a cup of sodas. The body of Christ. The body of Christ took up the sodas.